Brinkley's Book Nook. I hope everyone had a great Halloween and got lots of candy. Today I'm going to be talking about Time Villains and Bunny vs. Monkey. And in honor of Christmas, I am wearing a Grinch shirt. <laughs> this book is Time Villains. The author is Victor Pinero. I have never read any of his books, but I really love this book. This book is about three friends who find this table in an antique shop which purrs. They have this homework assignment where if, if you could invite any three people, who would you invite? So they invite three people and one of them is Blackbeard. Except the table has some magic that makes them all come to the table. So Blackbeard escapes and they have to figure out how to get Blackbeard back to the table to send him back in time. Next, I'm going to talk about Bunny vs. Monkey, which is written by Jamie Smart and is one of my favorite books. This is one of my favorite series. There are seven books with another one on the horizon, which I am hoping to get. This book is Peer Pants Hysterics, and I really like it because... The scientists fired this monkey in a kind of like circle spaceship. They tried to get him into space, but really he just flew over the hill into the woods. The monkey thought he was on another planet, so he tried to make these, uh, these woodland creatures bow down to him. And they get into all sorts of these shenanigans where this animal inventor, Skunky, makes all these gadgets for a monkey. And then these woodland creatures have to fight both of Skunky's and Monkey's inventions. If you're a fan of Dogman, then you will love this series. Next, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to review next week called Ham Hell Sing, Vampire Hunter. Now I'm going to read you another grim story. This story is called The Straw, the Coal, and the Bean. In a village dwelt a poor old woman who had gathered together a dish of beans and wanted to cook them. So she made a fire on her hearth, and that it might burn the quicker, she lighted it with a handful of straw. When she was emptying the beans into the pan, one dropped without her observing it and lay on the ground beside the straw, and soon afterwards a burning coal from the fire leapt down to the two. Then the straw began and said, Dear friends, from whence do you come here? The coal replied, I fortunately sprang out of the fire, and if I had not escaped by main force, my death would have been certain. I should have been burnt to ashes. The bean said, I too have escaped with a whole skin, but if the old woman had got me into the pan, I should have been made into broth without any mercy, like my comrades. And would a better fate have fallen to my lot, said the straw? The old woman has destroyed all my breath in fire and smoke. She seasized sixty of them at once and took their lives. I luckily slipped through her fingers. But what are we to do now, said the coal. I think, answered the bean, that as we have so fortunately escaped death, we should keep together like good companions. And lest a new mischance should overtake us here, we should go away together and repair to a foreign country. The proposition pleased the two others, and they set out on their way in company. Soon, however, they came to a little brook, and as there was no bridge or foot plank, plank they did not know how they were to get over it. The straw hit on a good idea and said, I will lay myself right across, and then you can walk over on me as a bridge. The straw therefore stretched itself from one bank to the other, and the coal, who was of an impetuous disposition tripped quite boldly on the newly built bridge <clears throat> but when she had reached the middle and heard the water rushing beneath her she was after all afraid and stood still and ventured no farther the straw however began to burn up broken two pieces and fell into the stream the coal slipped after her hissed when she got in the water and breathed her last the bean who had prudently stayed behind on the shore could not but laugh at the event was unable to stop and laughed so heartily that she burst. It would have been all over with her likewise. By good fortune, a tailor who was traveling in search of work had not sat down to rest by the brook. As he had a compassionate heart, he pulled out his needle and thread and sewed her together. 
Libbing thanked him most prettily, but as the sailor used black thread, all beings since then have, ha have a black sting.